shots of these banners while you spread out. Oh, <laughs>
You must have a ticket. <laughs> It's a long march. And the parade is still coming around the back there. I see the last aid is the, uh, the Griffin train. The Griffin train is uh, in the march today, carrying a lot of children. Kate and Lucas. Kate. Back a little bit. That's a good. Well done.
Wisconsin, we have here on the left, and it's great that they give you that loop on and see some of the, the products and some of the red wood that you bring to this district. And some of the great wood that you will show on the budget in the power. So you can spend a year to that. It's the first time that I've come to college in my official capacity as Minister of Future Fuel and Energy. That, of course, means that I'm the state government minister responsible for sector. And over the years, John. our role has had no better customer, supporter, or friend than the State Energy Commission. And I'd like to begin by congratulating the organisers of this celebration of 100 million tonnes of coal produced from the Coley Coal Field. Arriving at the exact day, cannot have been an easy calculation. Not to mention the delicate matter of which company could lay a claim to the title of having produced the 100 million ton. I noticed that the mines department categorically refused to place sensor on this matter. It was quite specific in its refusal to act as a referee in the debate. So I'm sure, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls, you will understand that to reach a figure like that is a significant milestone and reflects the commitment, the dedication, and the professionalism of the mining companies, of the engineers, of the mine workers, and all of those associated with them over many years. And I'd now like to briefly address the young people who have so willingly participated in today's celebrations. I think that they will gain an appreciation from today's celebrations of what it is that makes a society and what it is that makes a community. There are many, many different people involved in the coal industry. There are many different talents that are put to work. And I think when we think of those talents and those different organisations, the unions on the one side, the companies on the other, the engineers, the mine workers, the fire brigade, the safety workers, the town infrastructure that helps support the industry, you would appreciate that what makes our democratic society is such a great thing is that we appreciate and understand the contribution of all of those elements. And if we don't come to that appreciation, we lose, lose a sense of our community and of our democracy. And I'm sure the young people of color who have seen those different talents and capacities in the parade today, and we should recognize all of them. But as Roseanne said, this celebration is timely. The coal industry appears to be at a new crossroads. As Western Australia is only producing coal fuels, coal has always occupied a special place in the state's energy scene. But like any mining town, it has not always had a smooth ride. And today, coal and its coal mining industry faces one of the more testing times with its preeminence as the supplier of fuel for electricity generation. Sequoia is far and away the state's biggest customer for coal. It takes about 4 million tonnes of coal a year from the coal coal fields. About 80% of the total production. In some years, Sequoia's share has reached the high 90s. More than half that coal is burnt at the Muja Power Station, which has been operating for 25 years. Coal has done well for this relationship, but the wages bill the money spent on local services, both by sector and the mining companies, is significant. There can be no doubt that the energy sector is of immense value to coal, the southwest and in the long run to Western Australia. It is worth considering for a moment where coal would be, coal would be without coal. After so many years depending on coal for power generation, the state now has a new player in the game. Just as all of us that support football so strongly realise that there's a new player in the Australian football world. In the, in the energy business, we see natural gas as a valuable and good quantity at competitive prices and it's seen by many as environmentally more friendly. While Western Australia's demand for electricity continues to rise, now the most important requisite is that we bring down the price of power.
So that when we move with them, we'll bring these new states for secondary industry development. And we'll see the pace of development of the eastern states. The development of the free system there, linking Queensland through to South Australia, which represents a real threat to our own state. We see internally to the state the natural gas will reduce reductions in power tariffs, but not until after 1995. Second's coal proposal, on the other hand, can begin to produce improvements this year, but to do that, we need to make changes. The land is available for filling out the farms, the environment will approve the process is complete, we have the right of consortiums in the to own and operate the new power station, and now it's up to Colin and indeed partly to Kwanana. By now you will be fully aware of the major conditions that must be met in respect of the productivity of our power stations, and in respect of the price of coal to be delivered to Sequoia. The talks we've had so far have made some progress, but there is still some considerable distance to go. And I would like to reassure any doubters amongst you that the state government and Sequoia will proceed with the coal fired power station in Colin if the agreement can be reached on those productivity and price factors. What we're putting forward is not a name of claim, but it's a set of conditions that makes that option competitive. And ladies and gentlemen, it's really up to the coal mining companies and the unions and the power station unions to sit down and work very hard to find ways of achieving that option. In a sense, we're at the crossroads here in Western Australia in respect to the future of our state. If the state is to have political strength, it must have economic strength. The economic facilities and possibilities are here in Western Australia. But we need to make sure that our infrastructure, particularly the price of energy that we can offer potential investors, needs to be won. So just as Australia is looking to the future, and the other states are trying to put themselves into a position to become a key element in that future, we in Western Australia need to do this. Now the people of Cali, and in particular, those involved in the power industry and the coal industry can take the lead in making sure that Western Australia is still politically and economically a leading state in our great nation. Leadership is what it is all about. And we've made that offer to the people and the unions and the companies in this district to offer that leadership to the rest of the state. The choice shouldn't really be difficult. If the decision is made for coal, then coal can look forward to perhaps eight million tons a year required for this and the next coal fire development at the end of the decade. However, the gas wins today because it is more competitive than the requirement for coal and coal at Asia will almost certainly fall back to about three million tons. Eight million against three million. I think the decision should be an easy one. And I'm confident that the energy and resourceful people of Cali will see that they can take the lead with the future of our state, and they can do it now. And we're certainly very, very keen to assist in that process. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for the warm welcome that you've given me in Cali in the last few days, at the expo yesterday, and at the celebrations today. I'm very keen to be back again with many of my colleagues next week to much harder talking about all of the issues that we need to address. But it's my very, very great pleasure to be with you today as part of your celebrations of 100 million tons of coal. And boys and girls, remember all of the hard work and show respect for all of those people that made those 100 million tons of coal possible. Thank you very much.